in John's gospel, we get the memorable story of the woman caught in adultery. Most of us remember this story that uh, Jesus tells the crowd uh, that he who is without sin cast the first stone. And so we might walk away with the impression that Jesus is sort of setting their attitude straight, that maybe we shouldn't be so worried about these things that, that, these, uh, that these Jews were so worried about, that Jesus was less worried about those things. And, uh, you know, he, he taught the crowd to care about it all just a little bit less. This isn't true. I think the, the details of the story don't bear this out. Uh, first off, the woman was caught in adultery. There's, there's no denying her guilt, right? This is a clear case of someone actually guilty, unlike other stories, especially in the Old Testament, where someone may have been accused of adultery but not guilty. This is a case where the woman was caught in adultery. So she's guilty. And the crowd comes to Jesus and makes a pretty impressive, uh, a, a impressive plea. You know, Jesus, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? The law commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? So Jesus' response seems like it can go only one of two ways. The first is he can say, it doesn't matter. The law doesn't matter. Let her go. Everybody calm down. It's not that big a deal. The other thing he could have done is he could have said, the law is a big deal, and we have to follow the law, and we would be right to follow the law, so let's all stone her. Instead, Jesus does what he often does in the Gospels. He outsmarts everyone, right? He gives us a solution to the problem that we might not have been thinking of. So what is Jesus' solution? Well, first of all, he bends down and he begins to, to write in the dirt with his finger. Now, this is, this is mysterious, and no one really knows for sure exactly what was happening there, but some of the, some of the church fathers, you know, throughout the years, very saintly people, have uh, believed that Jesus was writing down the names of the woman's accusers. He was writing down their names. And then he writes down the names of the people that they had committed adultery with. So he, in a sense, is accusing the crowd of having committed adultery without accusing the crowd of having committed adultery, right? So Jesus, had he out loud stood up and said, I accuse you of adultery and you of adultery, had he done that, they would have all been liable to being stoned. Right? They would have all deserved that punishment. And so Jesus instead, very cleverly, makes it clear that I could be accusing you, but I won't. And so then the rest of the crowd goes away, not because Jesus has undone the law, but rather because they know what it's like to feel God's mercy. They know what it's like for their sin to be uncovered and named as a sin, and then have Christ say, sin doesn't get the last word. I get the last word, and I love you right? We, for our part uh, today, I think can all name our sins, right? We can all say the things that we have done wrong, but there will always be that temptation to say, well, what I did wasn't that bad. What I did wasn't so wrong that, that I deserve punishment. The answer is you do. <laughs> you do deserve punishment, right? That is still the, the, the just part of the equation says that we do deserve some kind of punishment for our sins. But Jesus seems to be satisfied by saying, I do not accuse you so go and sin no more. I hope that all of us, uh, when we think of our sins, rather than running from the fact that they're sins, recognize that Christ's mercy is there for us when we sin and that that inspires us to be more merciful as well. Amen.